Hey guys, welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm going to do an introduction to use substitution and um, then I'm going to follow it with four basic examples which are followed by six uh, more challenging examples and then three very difficult problems for fun. Uh, of all of the videos, I think this is the most important and the one that you'll get the most out of. And that's because in this video, I cover th uh, three very, very important strategies that you should have every time you're looking at a use substitution problem. Um, yeah, so let's dive right in. The first of those strategies is our first rule of thumb, which said that, which says that when you're picking a U, or once you pick a U, that you should look for DU, or a constant times DU to be inside of your integral. Now, this is better done with an example, so let's look at this problem, which will be the first basic example I'll solve. Yeah? Now, looking at this, it's clear that there are only really two reasonable choices of u. This here, the fifth degree polynomial, or the sixth degree polynomial there, right? Those are the only reasonable choices. But rule of thumb number one allows you to distinguish which is better and which is the correct choice, which is u equaling x to the sixth plus 2x um, plus 1. Because if you calculate du, then du is going to be 6x to the 5th plus 2 dx. Now, if we look for du inside of our integral, we don't quite find it. But if we look at 1 half du, 1 half du, which is um, 3x to the 5th plus 1 dx, is exactly what we have in our integral. Yeah? And therefore, we've made the correct choice of u in picking u to be this sixth degree polynomial. Yeah? Cool. All right. That's all there is to the first rule of thumb. But it's the most important of the three. Yeah? Hence why it's first. Um, all right. So then let's go to our second rule of thumb. Second rule of thumb con con concerns um, finding a composition of two functions inside our integral. So if we see f of g of x, um, inside our integral, then we should make g of x our u, is what the second rule of thumb says. Now, let's look back at this first example and see if we have a composition of two functions. Well, we do, right here. What I just circled is of the form f of g of x, where f of x is equal to x to the fifth, and then g of x is equal to x to the sixth plus 2x, and plus 1. And what does this rule of thumb say? It says to make g of x u. Well, that's an agreement with rule of thumb number 1, so we don't even need to do any more explanation. Well done, rule of thumb number 2. The question is, which is better? Actually, they're about as good. There are times when rule of thumb number 1 could lead you astray, and rule of thumb number 2 is much more reliable, as in this example here. Um, in this example, um, Rule of thumb number one alone could possibly mislead you to think that u should be simply x to the fourth. That's because du would then be 4x to the third dx. And notice that uh, we have x to the third and then dx. The only thing that we're missing from our du is the four. And as we explained um, when we're talking about this example, we're not bothered by missing a constant, right? And so, you see, rule of thumb number one alone could lead you to think that in this problem, in the second problem, that uh, we should make u just x to the fourth. But rule of thumb number two would tell you that the correct choice is u equaling um, x to the fourth and then plus two. And so, there plus 2 because du first of all would be just like before 4x cubed dx by before I mean when we just picked x to the fourth alone to be u du is the same because the derivative of the constant is 0 and and so then we see that we've got confirmation x cubed is here dx is there again we're missing the 4 but we're not bothered um, and so then you know because including the 2 allows us to write this in even more simplified a way instead of cosine of u plus 2 we can just write cosine of u we definitely prefer including the two and that's actually what our third and final rule of thumb is going to say which is that when we're looking to pick a u if there's a constant that's added or subtracted from u 
then we should include the constant as part of our u. That's what this third rule of thumb is articulating. So um, even if we'd uh, started off on the wrong foot with the uh, first rule of thumb and thought u should be just x to the fourth, the third rule of thumb would have saved the day and it would have told us to include the two with the x to the fourth, which of course, rule of thumb number two completely agrees with, right? Yeah, okay, cool. This video is sounding really corny at this point, but I hope it's really helpful.